And the retail giant H&M is facing a backlash and a potential boycott in China because it will not source its cotton from Xinjiang province. In a statement issued last year, H&M said it was deeply concerned by reports of forced labor and discrimination against Xinjiang's Muslim minorities. Then on Wednesday, the Chinese Communist Youth League posted this on social media, saying, and I quote, spreading rumors to boycott Xinjiang cotton while wanting to make money in China. Wishful thinking, it says. Shortly after, H&M disappeared from two of China's major shopping platforms. Chinese state TV also released photos mocking the H&M logo, calling it ridiculous. And even some celebrities have claimed they are breaking ties with the retailer. Let's get more on this now from Sean Ryan, who's founder of the China Market Research Group and author of several books on China, including The End of Cheap China. Very good to talk to you. Can I ask you, first of all, what do you think, of, well, first of all, why this reaction to the H&M statement, given that it was actually made last year? Why has it taken so long? It is actually kind of surprising, Mike, and it's always good to speak with you, because H&M's statement came out last year. So why did it take a full year for Chinese consumers to get really angry on social media and start to call for boycotts against H&M throughout the country. It's really because of the backdrop of what happened two days ago, Mike. The European Union slapped sanctions on four Chinese government officials in Xinjiang, saying that there was genocide, there was uh, slave labor-like conditions, and human rights abuses. Now, China's government says that there, are no there is no genocide, that there are no slave labor camps, that they've set up vocational training centers to help Xinjiang people, who really truly are poor, be able to speak Mandarin, be able to have better job skills so that they can integrate into society. So because of the backdrop of the sanctions from the EU, that's where you see China's government and now Chinese consumers are retaliating, retaliating against H&M and other European companies. As you say, the Chinese government does say that, but there is, of course, as the BBC has been broadcasting, first-hand testimony and conclusive, well-verified satellite images. Uh, I'm do you not think sure I would call it conclusive, Mike. I mean, I think Adrian Zenz, a German researcher who's created a lot of the reports, is actually an anti-Semite who says that Muslims and Jews will go to hell because they're not Christian. Let's, so I think let's you know, not there's still in, let's not get into that about we, whether or not this is we truthful. Can't, we can't sort that out here, as you know, of course, but the images are, are pretty unmistakable. I think certainly the testimony was firsthand. More importantly, I guess, right at the moment, is this a sign, do you think, that, uh, that the sanctions from the U.S. are having an effect? And if that's so, do you expect this kind of retaliation, this tit-for-tat, to go on under the Biden administration? Yeah, so I do see that China is going to stand strong. They want to make sure that Europe and the United States knows that it's no longer 1860, where European powers came in and burned down Beijing's famed summer palace, where the emperor, the emperor vacationed. So China is going to push back. And so I think the world has to understand the next five to 10 years, we're going to see a lot of tension between America and China, Europe and China, unfortunately, um, especially because China is the world's greatest growth engine for even the largest companies. I mean, the previous segment showed that India and Brazil both are having problems with COVID. China has largely contained it since April of 2020. And so like for H&M, China is their fourth largest market. They have 520 outlets and generated $339 million worth of sales last year. So hopefully, you know, China can come to an understanding, you know, competition, not an enemy like relationship with the U United States and Europe. Because uh, that's not going to solve any of the world problems. Yeah, that's very interesting, isn't it? And, and of course, money talks. Uh, increasingly, then, is China seeing social media as a tool of geopolitics? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, this case against boycotts against H&M is very common. You know, last year, um, Daryl Morey, a general manager of the Houston Rockets at the time, said free Hong Kong, pro-democracy in Hong Kong while there was rioting going on there. And all of a sudden you saw celebrities, you saw companies all say, we're going to boycott the NBA. And that really impacted the NBA sales in China. And so now you're going to see it also with H&M. So social media is being whipped up organically by everyday consumers who truly are angry at H&M or the NBA, but it's also aided and embedded by the government because it's a great way to rally support for the government's leadership. So this is something that we're going to see not just in China, but throughout the world in the coming years. Social Understood. media can Sean, be great, but it can also be dangerous. Forgive me, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Sean. Uh, Sean Ryan, very interesting to talk to you. Thank you. As always, thanks for having me, Mike.